the news that we have today it has to deal with nuclear issues outside of Fukushima. We do have some really big Fukushima news coming in, particularly with how they deal with trying to find fuel, most of which has been blown out of it, but we'll get to it. Um, and this is from Pakistan, and Pakistan and India, as many of you likely know, have long been at each other's throat. And this is starting to come to a head because uh, Pakistan is a country that is really almost at civil war at this point. When you're talking about situations that see one side of the government completely at odds with a large number of people within the government to support radicalism and to support terrorism, then you do see these kinds of things come up that we're talking about here. Iran, Pakistan, these are some nations that they simply are a danger to the world and everyone in it. It's there, these aren't people that you can just leave alone because they end up coming to where you are and trying to bring grief to you because you don't share the same religion. Well, let's, let's have a look at this. Pakistan fired its first submarine launch cruise missile on Monday, the Monday said, a show of force for a country that sees its missile development as a deterrent against arch foe India. Now listen, India's got a Muslim problem too. Not as bad as Pakistan's, but you know what? You don't see, why is it we don't see India in the news? Constantly talking about blowing people up. Constantly talking about nuclear warfare, unless it's the defense. Could it maybe be that the problem that we are really see is one of Islam. Why are not the uh, Hindus or the pagans or uh, any of the people who worship the mystic religions of India bombing anybody? People attack me all the time. They say, Sam, you're a Christian. You don't get it. Okay, we're not talking about Christians on either side here. Why isn't India's non-Muslim, non-Christian community blowing anybody up? Why is that? Why does that seem to be the case everywhere we go? The launch of the nuclear-capable Babur-3 missile, which has a range of 280 miles, was fired at an undisclosed location in the Indian Ocean, and it's likely to heighten long-running tension between India and Pakistan. The nuclear-armed neighbors have fought three wars since independence from Britain in 1947. Both nations have been developing missiles of varying ranges since they concluded nuclear tests in May of 1998. Yeah, and guess who it is that's still trying to threaten their neighbors on a regular basis? The Muslims. Pakistan eyes his hallmark development as a step toward reinforcing the policy of credible minimum deterrence, the military's media said in a statement. The spokesman at the Indian Defense Ministry was not immediately available for comment on the Pakistani missile test. Now, the reason that this is so stupid is that there isn't any way that Pakistan nor India could use nuclear weapons on the other one. Because the fallout, even if it's as small such a thing as a small nuclear bomb, that's just a funny sentence, even if it's a small bomb, like Hiroshima or Nagasaki, the fallout from India, if Pakistan does it, or the fallout the other way around, if India does it, with poison their own land. That's why there's not a really good chance of ever seeing, we don't want to see this, of ever seeing a nuclear solution to the North Korea problem. Because the fallout would poison the people in the South. Therefore, what India and Pakistan both are doing here, particularly Pakistan right now, is wasting their money. If their, if their motive is to use a nuclear deterrent or as a weapon, that you can't do that. We can't nuke Canada. We can't nuke Mexico. Because the fallout would poison us if, it's, as if we had nuked ourselves. So this whole article doesn't address the major problem here, which is they can't use the missiles. An Army spokesman later confirmed the language meant the missile was equipped to carry nuclear warheads. It was not equipped at the time. The Babar-3 is a sea-based variant of a ground launch Babar-2 missile. So. Last year, Pakistan said it was seriously concerned by India's test of anti-ballistic missiles, which media reports said it could intercept incoming missiles. Well, there's a big difference between testing weaponry that can stop an attack 
and testing weaponry, which is primarily used to cause attack. Okay. Anti-ballistic missiles are not nuclear weapons. When you see this with uh, Iran, too, Iran tests nuclear weapons and then says that they're allowed to test weapons as a deterrent. Well, they, it's not a, a nuclear weapon is not a deterrent. It is not a defensive weapon. It is an aggressive weapon. So if you are testing nuclear weapons, then what you are testing is for an attack. Okay, think about it. When the missiles are coming up, you don't see countries launching other nuclear missiles up to hit it. Because if you do, you've just created a nuclear explosion in your own sky, so there was no sense in bringing down the original nuclear weapon. That's why you tune in, isn't it? Yahoo again, AP exclusive. I hate Yahoo News, by the way, but they've got, they've got good leads, and it's leftists. Diplomats, Iran to get natural uranium match. Now, here's another one. Here's Iran, who has been caught over and over and over again breaking their promises about the nuclear trade deal. And I put this in my articles at the Conservative Daily Post. Please tune in. Um, you have Iran saying that Pakistan, India, the U.S., Israel, they have nuclear weapons. Why can't we have nuclear weapons? Well, first of all, you have signed deals to say that you won't make nuclear weapons in return for the money. Why did you get the money? Because, most, like most dictatorships, you cannot feed yourself without food from other countries. Therefore, when other countries give you food, because you're too dumb to be able to grow it, and then you want to launch and spend all the money that you save not making food on nuclear weapons to harm other people under the guise of a power plant that you are building on an earthquake zone, which will cause a Fukushima in Iran, then the world has every right to take notice. Iran to receive a huge shipment of natural uranium from Russia to compensate for its exporting tons of reactor coolant, diplomats say, in a move approved by the outgoing U.S. administration and other governments seeking to keep Tehran committed to a nuclear a landmark pact. Now, did you catch that? Because Yahoo being leftist and whiny tend to walk over important issues. Very important issues like Iran, it just it says it right there, is getting natural ura uh, natural uranium, most deadly element known to man, from Russia, in order for coolant. Now the coolant is what they're allowed to have for the reactor. The reactor is supposed to be their coolant. If they are selling the coolant which they didn't have, they just made it, then they're not going to have coolant for their reactor when needed. Unless, of course, they're not trying to build the reactor. Maybe they're trying to build a nuclear bomb, which is exactly what they've been saying that they were trying to do for a long time. Won't you imagine that? Two senior diplomats said the transfer recently approved by the U.S. and five other world powers that negotiated the nuclear deal with Iran for seized delivery of 116 metric tons, that's 130 tons, of natural uranium. The UN Security Council, which his name is the opposite of what it is, is needed to confirm but the formality, considering five of those powers are permanent security members. Uranium can be enriched to levels ranging from reactor fuel to medical research and purposes to the core of an atomic bomb. Iran says that it has no interest in such weapons and its activities are being closely monitored under the nuclear pact to make sure they remain peaceful. That's not been the case not been the case at all. Where has anybody been where just a couple days ago they pulled up beside a Saudi Arabian vessel that many people think that they believed was ours and set off a terrorist attack that killed people. They're, 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 they're not. They got a similar amount of uranium in 2015 as part of the negotiations leading up to the nuclear deal and a swap for enriched uranium it sent to Russia. So they were already trying to build nuclear weapons so we're supposed to believe they just changed their mind now that we gave them money in which to do it. The new shipment will be the first such consignment since the deal came into force a year ago. Of course, like I said, they've bombed somebody since this was written. The diplomats' main focus of Iran's nuclear program demanded anonymity Monday because they are not allowed to discuss the program's confidential details. Because it allows, I'll tell you why, because it allows Iran to run willy-nilly with their deal and open up any kind of destructive nuclear weaponry system that they choose to. By the time we're even allowed to come in and check it, it could be shut down. 
The National Eurobrainia Agreement comes at a sensitive time. Yeah, I would say so. Um, Trump has been against it since day one because it's a terrible deal, so he should have been against it, as Kerry and Obama should have, too, and never made it. The diplomats said that any uranium transfer to Iran after the deal came into effect would be under strict surveillance of the U.N.'s International Atomic Energy Agency. Well, how, much, how many of you have faith in the U.N.? Have you seen them bringing world peace? Because I haven't. The swap is in compensation for the approximately 40 me 44 tons of heavy water exported by Iran to Russia since the nuclear agreement went into effect, said the official from one of the six powers, but also demanded anonymity. Everyone's demanding anonymity because they, they wrote this deal in such a way that nobody can talk about the one simple fact. Here's what you're not allowed to talk about. You're not allowed to talk about the fact that Iran pulling the wool over everyone's eyes, everyone else's eyes and attempting to build nuclear weapons in which to attract our neighbors with, to attack you with, to hurt you with and other countries with. That's what you're not supposed to talk about and that's why Trump is going to go in and put an end to it. And you know what? The country does not have a right to build its own nuclear arsenal when they have signed papers saying that they were not going to. But then again, Iran is one of the most dishonest nations in the world. So when somebody is as dishonest as can possibly be, when you can't trust them to keep even the smallest bit of honesty, then who cares? RT, um, radioactive contamination spreading and shuttered Hanford site. Now keep in mind, they wanted to keep the Hanford site running and running and running, remember? They said that we were being unreasonable when we wanted it shut down. They said that we were a bunch of closed-minded liberal whiteys, which is funny because I'm nothing even close to that. But okay. Let us take a really good look at this nuclear power plant that they thought that you should be able to that they thought that they should be able to keep running with and you should just put up with. The Hanford uh, site in Washington hasn't been operational since 1967 but continues to spread radioactive waste with a demolition date earmarked as late as 2032. In other words, they're going to let the thing sit for like 70 years because they know that taking these apart is much more cumbersome and poisoning than they ever admitted. Otherwise, they would have never been allowed to open them. But our country lets people open everything as long as they can subsidy it and it's good for the bottom energy line. They don't care about the cancers or the contamination. They don't live there. Although it hasn't been operational for nearly 50 years, a report published by the Tri-City Herald has found that radioactive contamination is spreading inside the plant's reduction oxidation complex and could be worsened as the facility deteriorates. It says that the facility is roughly half the size of Rhode Island. And because Redux is located so deeply in the center, it poses little risk to the public. However, preventing the problem from worsening isn't going to be cheap. The report recommends that 148 to 181 million be spent on the interim cleanup and maintenance. Well, wait a minute. I thought all this saved us money. I thought all this was good for the environment, remember? The plant process, 24,000 tons of irradiated uranium fuel rods to remove plutonium from nuclear weapons during the Cold War, proving that nuclear power is nothing but a front for the nuclear war industry, just like Helen Holocaust has said. The Hanford site is not scheduled to be dismantled for at least another 15 years, triggering concerns that conditions will continue to worsen given its current state. Signs of animal intrusion have been found at the plant. That matters because the animals get out with contamination on them and then start bringing it into the environment, into the ground, into the earth, into the water, which we drink it. Um, where plastic bags were attached to processing line to catch any leaking residue nitrate, that's great. Salt used to neutralize contaminants in the past is now corroding the stainless steel piping. Deteriorating asbestos was found as well. There's another cancer risk. The problems with the plant have been known for some time, but exu exuberant dismantling costs and environmental considerations have been placed on the back burner. Yeah, I'm sure it's to help the environment that you allow a deteriorating, falling over nuclear power pla uh, plant, processing plant, I should say, to exist. Yeah, that's it. If it's nuclear, it's no. What if it's thorium? No. What if it's for weapons? No. What if it, no? If it's nuclear, it's no. There's no rewording to it. It's, it's a no. All other options are ridiculous. How's that? Is it clear? Guys, I got uh, two more stories to get to, but I did want to do this real quick. Data Lights went out. Buy it, read it, and love it, which is exact order it always goes in. 
$2.99. It's only $2.99. And it's one of the funniest books you'll ever read. It's The Day the Lights Went Out. Um, a bunch of people trying to survive in 19th century technology after the power has gone out. But it's not a dystopian horror, not horror novel, novel or anything. It's actually a uh, very funny and well-written book. So do yourself a favor. Go and check it out. And buckle in for the last two stories, friends. This is the one you've been waiting for. Guardian.com possible nuclear fuel find raises hopes of Fukushima plant breakthrough. Now, we know that they're not going to find all of the fuel. How do we know this? Because some of the fuel's not in Fukushima anymore. The entire core from one of the reactors is up in the air and in Tokyo. It's called a melt out the nuclear core which is as radioactively, uh, some, some things are more radioactive than the surface of the sun. This is fact. Are in Tokyo, on the ground, in the form of a black goo. It is the black residue found all over the streets of Tokyo, where they're hoping to have, you know, the Olympics. The poison. Countless people, of course. Um, the rest of the fuel, they're not really sure where it was. Well, now they think they may have found some. Operator says it has seen what may be fuel debris beneath the damaged number two reactor destroyed six years ago in a triple meltdown. Beneath it? You mean like burrowing into the ground and into the water table so that everybody can drink it in their water, feed it to their animals, feed it to their livestock, sell the livestock to the world, and poison the world? Is that what you mean? Hopes have been raised for a breakthrough in the decommissioning of the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi plant. Now keep in mind, the one that was supposed to, that they shut down properly can't be touched for 15 years. But this is after its six, uh, excuse me, after its operator said it may have discovered melted fuel beneath a reactor, although six years after the plant suffered a triple meltdown. Well, that's great. Not only is it almost six years past the date, which is March, of course, but it is also, and maybe, we may have found the fuel. If they did, they're leaving off the information that we don't really have the technology to get to it because the radioactivity fries even machines and robots. TEPCO, of course, Tokyo Electric Power will say it with me. It's GE. What should you never do? You guys know the words. Never invest. Never get in a mutual fund with General Electric or TEPCO. Oh, that's right. They said on Monday that a remote camera appeared to have found the debris beneath the badly damaged number two reactor where radiation levels remain dangerously high. Locating the fuel is the first step towards removing it. Yeah, the first step as in, you are in Maine, you are walking to California, and you have now taken your first step. The operator has said more analysis would be needed before it could confirm that the images were of melted uranium fuel rods, but confirmed that the lumps were not there before Fukushima Daiichi was hit by the earthquakes. They don't even know if it's what they found. It could just be other debris. The tsunami triggered a 9 magnitude earthquake, killed more than 18,500 people. We know all of this. So meltdowns in three of the plant's six reactors forced 161,000 people to evacuate. Many of them will not likely never be able to return home. Well, no, no. Unlikely to return home is pretty, it's a pretty good description. How about never? Never would be good. Never is a good word to use when you're talking about poisoning that lasts for millions of years. I think it's 437 million years for uranium. They can come back then. If TEPCO can confirm that the black mass comprises melted fuel, it would represent a significant breakthrough in the, in the recovery effort that has been hit by mishaps, the buildup of huge quantities of contaminated water, and soaring costs. This is a big step forward as we go get some precious data for the decommissioning process, including removing the fuel debris. Using a remotely controlled camera, which will melt out due to the radiation, attached to the end of a 1.5 meter long telescopic arm, which will now be radioactive and unable to be used when you bring it back up, TEPCO GE technicians located black lumps of wire mesh grating just below the reactor's presser vessel, pre -presser, pressure vessel located, uh, of course, under the, the system. Local media said the company plans to send a scorpion-like robot equipped with cameras that will melt down and no longer be able to be touched. It will ra measure the radiation with equipment and a temperature gauge. Number two reactor containment vessel will be thoroughly inspected. Three previous attempts to use robots to locate melted fuel inside the same reactor ended in failure when the devices were rendered useless by the reactor.
radiation. Developing the means to remove the fuel, a task it says that TEPCO has said it will become easier once it can gauge its condition, would be the highest step towards the mission to clean up the plant. Yeah, well, we don't even know for sure if we found the fuel. Okay, we don't even know for sure if this is the fuel. We need to do it, friends. We need to make sure that this kind of thing is kept on hold and that it is thoroughly stopped. And you know what that means, friends? It is now time for the dumdy of the day. That is when we find the absolute <laughs> dumbest story. Let me turn that down. That's too much dumbdy. It's when we find the absolute dumbest story of the day. And make it to the dumdy of the day. Friends, it's going to be the dumb cap of the month. That's going to be coming up probably Monday or Tuesday. Oh yeah, you are an idiot. Who's getting the dumdy today? Well, I gave you a hint at the beginning of the show. None other than our dear friends. Iran. Iran now is becoming a snowflake nation. They are. They're like the social justice warriors. If you point out where they're wrong, they whine. Listen to this. Iran. Donald Trump's comments psychologically affected the nuclear deal. So the nuclear deal has psychological flaws, or is it just you? You, Iran are the ones who have psychologically affected the nuclear deal because it is you that have foolishly moved ahead and lied about what you said you were going to do. People don't like liars. Iran's latest assault on President Barack Obama's nuclear deal is a report claiming that President-elect Donald Trump's criticism has psychologically affected implementation by causing a sense of anxiety and uncertainty oh, over the fate of the agreement. The agreement is as good as dead because you're a bunch of lying bastards and turbans and we have a real president in office now, not an idiot named Barack Obama. It is not uncertainty, it is doomed. So says Saudi Arabia's Ala Arabaya is summing up for the report of Iran's foreign ministry. He writes, Trump's statements on the nuclear agreement, which were perfectly sane, with Tehran, who are not sane, during his presidential campaign and after his election, caused great concern to Iranian officials, I bet it did, as well as companies and international banks, which intended to cooperate with Tehran. Well, you know what? Maybe. Maybe international community doesn't need to work with terrorists. Maybe that's what you get when you want to harm other people. Maybe people don't do business with you. Subsequent, subsequently, President Rouhani and, I, and Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif were faced with a wave of domestic criticism, especially from the supporters of the Iranian leader Omar Khomeini, because Khomeini is a nutcase. The proximate cause of Iranian anxiety and distress is not Trump himself, but his Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who is speaking for Trump and who is speaking logically. The foreign minister has developed a bad case of indigestion over Tillerson's recommendation of a co comprehensive review of the nuclear deal. Well, I think there does need to be a deal when somebody in the deal is lying and not keeping their word. When someone is deliberately lying about what they're doing after getting money from you. Do you, you do realize, as I said earlier, Iran wouldn't even be able to afford to eat if we hadn't sent them this money. The money they are saving, they're using to build weaponry to break the deal that they made saying that they were honest when the whole world knew that they were not honest. The Associated Press reports that Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javid Zarif is insisting Iran is partly to blame grievances over the deal, but they intend to honor it and are not overly concerned with criticism from Trump or his cabinet. Whatever he does to the nuclear deal, we are not worried because we have our own options. Well, then you don't need our money. Kindly give us back the gold and the uh, billions, with a B, dollars in cash, and then let's see if you still have options, you stupid ass. 
We believe it's in the interest of everybody to stick to the deal. Well, you didn't stick to the deal. You threatened your neighbors and you're trying to enrich uranium. So I guess by your own words, it doesn't, isn't a deal, then, is it? Most importantly, it's an international agreement, an international agreement that you have broken, and therefore the international community is breaking the agreement with you. We'll go by this point by point, since it's clear you're very stupid. It's not a bilateral agreement between Iran and the United States. That's okay. You made a deal with the United States, and they're going to prevent you from moving forward. President Trump likes surprises, and we will make him surprised. Well, they tried to make him surprised, and all they did was do an attack yesterday. That has led to the destruction of the deal for them. And the deal is going to go considerably worse and worse. That is the outcome and the fate of the liars, friends. The fate of this show is adios. I'm signing off. Please hit share. Please hit subscribe. And please donate if you can. Because I own crap gear. I own almost nothing. But I'll tell you what I do have. I have the truth. I have facts. And I have a way to describe them and give them to you in a way that makes sense to you. We talked about complicated physics today, and I didn't lose anybody. Everybody knows exactly what we were talking about. That is what I do here, and I'm asking you to help me do it by donating at the correct views at Hotmail.com. You give me money, I give you a better show. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless. And remember, if it's nuclear, the answer is 